for the kind words and i would like to thank the organizers for giving the opportunity to talk in this forum of uh, diabetes yeah so i'm going to talk about the food at risk so the term food at risk is used to describe the food that is at risk of developing ulcers on the mainly on the plantar surface of foot or any kind of loss of tissue viability in a patient of diabetes so why these ulcers are so important in patients of diabetes because 85% of the lower extremity amputations which are which are done for the patients of diabetes which is the second most common cause of amputation worldwide after the road traffic accidents are preceded by these tiny foot ulcers and 85% of these ulcers are actually preventable hence the amputations are also preventable so if you want to prevent the amputations in patients of diabetes look for the tiny foot ulcer or look for the foot which is at risk prevent the foot ulcer or timely treat the foot ulcer to prevent the amputations in patients of diabetes so that is why it is very very important to recognize those people of diabetes who are having those feet which are at risk foot and prevent the ulcer formation now who is at risk diabetic neuropathy the person who is suffering from diabetic neuropathy diabetic neuropathy is diffuse in nature and it mainly involves the longest nerves of the lower extremity that's why we don't we have we don't have an entity called diabetic hands we have diabetic foots so those people who are suffering from diabetic neuropathy they fail to perceive the pain or trauma from mechanical thermal or chemical sources and this is what is known as lobs of or loss of protective sensation so those people who are suffering from loss of protective sensation they may fail to remove their feet from offending stimuli and gets injured with, without being aware of it we have seen many people they are roaming around with foreign bodies in their footwear all kinds of foreign bodies key chain broken pencils uh, any kind of stones these are in there in their uh, footwear and they develop foot ulcer and they are not aware of it we have seen people coming to us with burnt feet in the winter season from cigdi or heat convector and they are not aware of it so they come when the ulcer has got infected and has started foul swelling so this kind of extreme loss of protective sensation can be there for the patients of diabetes another very high risk people for uh, developing foot ulcer are people with peripheral vascular diseases these people are having because of ischemia these people they develop dryness of skin the ulcers are very slow to heal they get infected and patient may ultimately land up into the amputation some people may have both peripheral arterial diseases and neuropathy that is what is known as neuro ischemic foot that is again a very high risk foot in patients of diabetes again one very important category of people who are at risk of developing foot ulcer are people with foot deformities because of the not on it is not only the sensory nerve motor nerves are also affected in diabetes so those people who are suffering from motor neuropathy may develop wasting of the small muscle of foot may develop unopposed action of the contralateral group lead to deformities in the metatarsophalangeal and interphalangeal joints and these deformities they form bony prominences and skin overlying these deformities are high pressure areas which can get very easily ulcerated during prolonged walking or standing also so these are the people who are again high risk people person with previous ulcer even if that is a healed ulcer also one of the highest risk category person in fact person with previous amputation is another extremely high risk category person for development of foot ulcer because 50% of these people who have undergone amputation may develop foot ulcer in the surviving or contralateral limb and 50 to 60% of these persons may actually require amputation for their contralateral limb so these are the people they should be taken very very seriously patient with end stage renal disease are also very high risk category people for development of foot ulcer these people because of the accelerated peripheral vascular diseases uremic neuropathy, uh, neuropathy contributing to the diabetic neuropathy may also add to the woes of the patient and these people they, because of the repeated dialysis their nutrition suffers their self care suffers they are also at at the high risk of developing development of foot ulcers another male sex in a country like india increased mobility of male person put them on the higher risk of foot ulcer this is the risk categories defined by the international working group for the management of diabetic foot 
risk zero is very low risk. These people don't, don't have loss, that is loss of peripheral sensation or normal. They have normal feet. Their feet should be examined at least once in a year, like you do for the retinopathy screening, like you do for the nephropathy screening. You have to at least once examine the feet of all your diabetic patient, even if they are normal, they don't have neuropathy or even vasculopathy. Risk category one is low risk. They have either lobs or pad. Their feet should be examined at least six months in a year. And moderate risk category, these people have a neuro ischemic foot. That means they have both lobs and peripheral arterial diseases. Their feet should be examined at least three months in a year. Or whenever the patient, many patients, they don't come to you years together. So whenever patient comes to your chamber, don't forget to examine their feet also. You look for their blood pressure, look for their sugar, look for A1C, also examine their feet. Highest risk category is person with lobs or pad with previous ulcer or previous amputation or end stage renal disease. Their feet should be ideally examined every month. If they don't come to you every month, whenever they come to you for the examination, don't forget to examine their feet also. So this, these are the examples of different for, foreign bodies which have been detected in the footwear of the patient who were suffering from diabetic neuropathy. They suffered from the foot ulcer and they were not aware of these foreign bodies lying inside their footwear. So always ask your patients of diabetes to put your hands first in the footwear when they first put on their uh, shoes in the morning so that if there is any foreign body, hands can detect that but not the feet. So these are different for, uh, deformities in the foot of the patients of diabetes. This is uh, crowding of, of toes which can occur because of the narrow foot, uh, narrow toe box footwear. So avoid narrow toe box footwear is the rule for all your diabetic patients. These are the clot or deformities. These toes are liable to get ulcerated at the tip of these toes because these are the high pressure areas during walking or standing. This is again a uh, plantar um, dorsiflexion at the metatarsophalangeal joint. So sir, skin overlying this joint is, all, is a high pressure area which can get very easily cracked or ulcerated even walking or during standing. This is a hammer toe or hollux rigidus. The great toe plays a very, very important role in the walking cycle. In fact, 50% of the weight bearing or walking is through the great toe and this toe becomes rigid. There is a continuous high pressure on this ball of the great toe during walking. So 40% of the foot ulcers are occurring in the ball of the great toe. This is a Sharko foot, one of the highest risk category person is Sharko foot. And believe me, these patients are often missed by our clinician friends and these people patient, they ultimately land up into the amputation. If you find any diabetic patient who is having ulcer in the midfoot, always suspect a Charcot foot because this is a very difficult situation for us. If you are not handling these kind of patients on regular basis, kindly refer this patient to a person who is handling Charcot foot regularly because these patients require different category of treatment, offloading, prolonged antibiotics by plaster cast or Bed rest is also one of the treatment of these patients. So don't forget to diagnose or don't miss the diagnosis of a Sharko foot. If in doubt, refer it to somebody else. This is how you handle a patient with deformity. This is again a flexion deformity at the interphalangeal joints and dorsiflexion at the metatarsophalangeal joint leading to high pressure areas here and also at the tip of the metatars uh, interphalangeal joint. You can have broad toe box footwear for this category of people people and upper of the footwear can be uh, made with the elastic material so that these kind of deformities can be accommodated without causing any ulceration. This, so this is how you manage the high risk foot who are having deformities. Some of these patients may even require referral to an orthopedic surgeon for correction of these deformities even before they develop any foot ulcer. So how do you assess neuropathy? Details are beyond the Scope of my talk, we test for the touch sensation with the 10 gram monofilament, to check the vibration sense with the tuning fork 128 hertz, to check for the pin, pin prick sensation. And if you have a biothesiometer in your chamber, you can go for the quantification or risk assessment for the ulcer formation. How do you assess the vascular involvement? Simple, palpate the dorsal speedies and posterior TBL arteries, check for the ankle brachial reflex if it is more the ankle brachial index. If it is more than one, 
that person is not having ischemia less than 0.9 is mild ischemia this patient will require regular assessment and less than 0.5 is severe ischemia this patient may require further evaluation in form of arterial CT NGO or DSA or MR angiography. So these are the people sometimes may require direct referral to a vascular surgeon before they get ulceration or gangrene in their foot. So how do you manage this patient? If we go to the category 0 and category 1, that means these patients feet are either normal or have only loss of protective sensation or peripheral arterial diseases. For these patients, the only things which are very important is regular clinical examination for feet of their patient and patient education is extremely important for their patient because what not to do for these patients is also very, very significant to prevent any foot ulceration in this category of patient. Foot glycemic control, blood pressure control, dyslipidemia, no smoking, no tobacco chewing, visual inspection of the feet should be done by all the diabetic patients on a daily basis because any cuts or ulcerations or any red marks, if they are there, they should be reported as early as possible to clinician to avoid any further deterioration in the situation so that they do not land up into the amputation. Pad with ABI less than 0.5 should be referred to a vascular surgeon or should be further evaluated by further investigations. What, are, what should not be done by a person who is having neuropathic foot? Don't walk barefoot. There are some people who are walking on so-called acupressure walking tracks in the bars. They should be advised against doing so because these tracks may create high pressure areas on their uh, foot and they can develop foot ulcers later. Don't wear too tight footwear or socks. Don't let your feet dry. Apply a moisturizer. Simple petroleum jelly can do it. And keep the uh, um, spaces between the toe always dry. And uh, do not use any corn caps. There are calluses on the foot of the diabetic patient. These are areas of thickened and dead skin. They should be removed by the clinician in their chamber. No corn cap or chemical should be applied on these calluses. Some people are wrongly applying corn cap and they are doing more harm than doing any good. So you should educate your patient. Rather, if you callus, see any callus on the foot of your patient, try to remove it as, as early as followed followed by an offloading footwear. Do not use any healing pads, hot water bottles, or providone iodine on the foot ulcer because this will do harm. So risk category two, educate your patient plus examine their feet. Remove the calluses. If there are any calluses on the foot of your patient, remove followed by offloading footwear. Advise customize footwear to those who are having foot deformities. And some of these patients who are having foot deformities may require surgical correction of these deformities before they develop any foot ulcers. Some patients with severe deformities may require surgical correction. This is very recent photograph from my own clinic. This person is having a thick callus on the great toe and this person was roaming around with applying different kinds of dressing materials, antibiotics. Remember, diabetic foot ulcer and calluses, they do not heal by antibiotics or dressing. They heal by offloading. So no antibiotic or dressing material will help if you do not offload these foot ulcers. So I removed the uh, callus of this patient and simply applied one moisturizer on it and he was sent with the offloading footwear. This person usually they heal within one to two weeks of time. So risk category three is one of the most highest risk category people. You should assess the cardiovascular and renal assessment of this patient. Retinopathy should be looked into. Those people with this amputation may require referral to a person who is making artificial limb so that abnormal weight bearing on the surviving or the contralateral limb can be avoided so they don't develop foot ulcer on the contralateral limb which may ultimately land up into the amputations. So offloading footwear may be needed for person with previous foot ulcers because healed ulcers are also high pressure areas which get very easily cracked during the evilest of the trauma. So manage your risk very carefully because risk management is more important than you, than you make a regret later. So this is the end of my talk. Thank you for the patient listening.